government bonds. We saw them weakening as well for the sixth consecutive session. Let's get some more now with Simon Michelle from Fig Securities. Simon, great to see you there. Um, yields seem to be rising, all based on these expectations that the Fed is going to get going with raising rates. Good afternoon, Leanne. You're absolutely right. Yes, that uh, private sector job number we saw out of the US uh, overnight was very, very strong and it seems it's really locked in that tightening for next week. Uh, reflecting that, the US two-year yield has moved higher and is now the highest level we've seen since 2009. So we're certainly uh, reaching some new territory here. Yeah, it, we really are. Um, in terms of, well, you mentioned the private payroll number. We're also awaiting the official jobs report there on, on Friday. How important is this to the Fed's next move? Look, I think it'd have to be a pretty disappointing number to, to really sort of move them back from this uh, expected tightening and to see the market move it back from that as well. Um, you know, I think the market, having seen that uh, private sector job number uh, last night, gives them some confidence that we don't, don't expect anything uh, surprising, um, uh, apart from perhaps on the, up, on the upside. So I think we're pretty much locked in for next week. All right. Well, similarly to what we've seen in the US, Aussie yields also seem to be moving higher. And the Aussie tenure in particular, it's broken through its 2016 high. That's right. So, uh, you know, last year we know we started uh, on the back of the first interest rate increase in December 15, and then rates continued to fall, uh, moving lower, reaching record territory around July, August, and then uh, moving back up and on the back of the Trump surge. Basically, the end of the year where they started, we've broken through that level. And uh, this, for the first time this year, the 10 year has actually moved up into 2015 level territory. Mm. Um, look, we've seen the RBA meeting this week. That's been a, a key focus. and. Uh, all sort of playing into this story where I'm sure you'll agree the RBA wants to see the Fed getting going with, with hiking rates in terms of what that will do not only to yields but the currency. Absolutely. And I think, you know, this is the, the thing. We're seeing this reflected in uh, in the Aussie dollar and the US dollar at the moment as people to adjust for what is expected to be <laughs> high rates in the US. Um, that takes a bit of pressure off, uh, off the Aussie dollar. Uh, it lowers the Aussie dollar. The RBA would be happy uh, with that. It also increases the value of US rates in comparison to Australia. So that's likely to take a little bit of pressure off of our yields as well. So it really, I suppose, uh, and we saw this reflected in the RBA this week, it sort of gives them a little bit more room to move and I think uh, most commentators are expecting that uh, we'll see this cash rate at one and a half percent right through to the end of the year. All right and just to wrap things up any interesting Aussie issuance of note? Yeah a little bit of uh, interesting option we've had uh, a couple of kangaroo issues this is offshore companies issuing bonds in Australia in Australian dollars we've seen Shinhan Bank uh, a Korean bank and uh, also the Auckland uh, airport which is a great infrastructure asset uh, but uh, on top of that, Ale, the uh, biggest owner of pubs in Australia, they did a $150 million issue in Aussie dollars as well. So lots of issuance still on the go. All right, fantastic. Simon, appreciate you uh, joining us as always. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Leanne. Simon.